confidants, welcome to the Hennessy Zone. I had to create a space specifically for the topics that we needed to cover that required something a little stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. So if you're ready, let's get into it. If you can do me a favor on your way in and hit that like and subscribe button. Also that notification bell so you'll be notified when we either jump into the chalet for our more bubbly content or step over into the Hennessy Zone for our more serious discussions. It would be greatly appreciated. Come on and let's show the people that the classy drink Hennessy too. <laughs> so let me say this before we get into this story, right? Before anyone can get started in the comments. This is not a story about trans women versus women. This is not a story about how individual chooses to identify themselves. This is not even about trans women and whether they should be called women or who does or who does not accept them. This is a story about how sick this world has become. It's also a story about how someone with a God complex feels they have the power to choose whether someone lives or dies. No individual, no matter who they are or how they choose to identify, should fear whether or not they are going to meet ghost-faced on a date. Nobody. Nobody should have to fear whether or not this is the day someone else will get to make a decision on whether I get to live or make it back home to my family because you want to fulfill some sort of sick, twisted fantasy. But see, this is why you have to be so careful. There are so many bloodthirsty individuals in this world with blood and revenge for God knows what on their minds. And they make these decisions just because. This is beyond mental illness. This is demonic. And to know that we're the ones doing us, people of color, black individuals with this demonic bloodlust. There was a time that this wasn't something that you saw from us, black people us we were the ones looking at white america like they're crazy for doing stuff like this from serial killers to going postal to the unabomber to cults to school shootings we would say yeah we don't do that and, and now time and time again we're seeing us assist us <laughs> we're seeing us pop up in situations like this and i'm thinking when when did this become a thing for us when did the people of soul lose our souls? When, huh? When did we become the enemy to each other? You do not have to agree with my lifestyle to respect me as a person. I don't have to agree with your lifestyle to respect you as an individual. I remember a time when we could meet someone off of a dating app and it was just fun and games and hookups. Not anymore, <laughs> not anymore. Because this world and some of the individuals in it are just sick and twisted. Now you don't know who you're going to meet off a dating app. You barely know who you're going to meet in, in real life. You damn near have to ask for a psyche vow just to go on a date. And we tend to blame so much on mental health. But I'm starting to believe that some people are just evil. Just innately evil to their core. That there's just no good in them. Because how do you blatantly attack with the intentions of unaliving? So here's the story. And this story is out of Houston, Texas. So a transgender woman said she had her throat slit during a first date with a man she met on a dating app. In the video from ABC's 13's live streaming channel, Cordell Stewart, age 24, is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for the alleged attack that happened on September 20th. The 22-year-old victim, Taylor Smith, said she'd been on a dating app before, but has never met up with anyone in person. She described Stewart as a gentleman before their date and stated that she did not see any red flags. A couple of days after meeting and texting with Stewart, she said she invited him to her home in Southeast Houston. Before the two met, Smith said she told Stewart she was transgender. I would never not tell a person, Smith said. That was something discussed way before we even started having a conversation. According to Smith, Stewart arrived at her home around 5 p.m. with a backpack. Smith said she searched the bag but only found clothes inside. While they were together, she said the two watched a movie, ate dinner together, and cuddled. 
Smith said about five hours later, the two of them began kissing before he allegedly pinned her hands under his knees, pulled out a knife, and slit her throat. I guess it was in his shorts, and he slit my throat at the same time as he covered my mouth, Smith said. From there, Smith describes a violent brawl that ensued. She said Stewart beat her up as they battled over the knife. At this point, I'm like, oh my gosh, Taylor, if you don't fight back, you're going to die. He's going to get the knife out of your hands and he's going to stab you to death, she remembered. Stewart's mugshot showed scratches on his face. Smith said she was able to reach neighbors for help. Stewart was arrested hours later and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He remains in the Harris County Jail on a $125,000 bond. Smith received stitches to her neck and her hand, where she grabbed the knife during the fight. When asked if she thought Stewart was trying to kill her, Smith said, I know he was trying to kill me. I don't think anything. I know he was trying to kill me. If the knife were a bit sharper, I would have been dead. Smith said she does not believe that she was attacked because she was transgender. Stewart was aware before the confrontation, she said. I still want to know what it is, Smith said. I cooked for him, we prayed over our food, and we enjoyed each other's company. We laughed. Before inviting him over, Smith said she did not know about prior charges Stewart was facing. Court records in Galveston show Stewart was charged with murder in 2020. He was accused of shooting and killing a man during a sale of shoes. The case was dismissed in April 2023. Records cite that an eyewitness, a surviving victim of the shooting, refused to cooperate. The Galveston County District Attorney's Office said they had no option other than to drop the charges when the witness decided not to cooperate. Still, they do have the option to refile the case if the witness decides to cooperate. Stewart was also charged in 2022 for having a shank, a makeshift knife in jail. He pleaded guilty in the case and was given credit for time served. Please search their names, Smith said about using dating apps. I feel like if I would have searched his name up, I would have seen that. I probably would have been like, no, do your background checks and just be safe. Stewart's hired defense attorney declined to comment. He was expected back in court on January the 17th. I couldn't find any additional information on what happened when he went back to court, but in a more detailed account to uh, KHOU 11, Taylor Smith said that while she feels lucky to be alive to tell her story, she's still concerned that the man who once tried to kill her could try to hurt her again. She's not from Houston, but moved here about three years ago and immersed herself in her work. She didn't have time to make friends and without family around, she got bored. She said she made a profile on a dating app and matched with 24-year-old Cordell Rochon Stewart. Authorities said he's a Galveston County resident who was working as a cook at Sonic Drive-In. He also has two children. Things moved pretty quickly and they set up a date after about five days of texting each other. Smith invited him over after work one day. She cooked and they watched movies, all while they were getting to know each other better. Around 10 p.m. that night, she said she laid down to watch another movie, and she started to doze off when she heard him say something about the bathroom. She said he got up and went to the bathroom, but she didn't hear the toilet flush or water running in the sink, which was odd. When he came back to the bed, Smith said things started to get intimate and then took a dangerous turn. She said he stopped kissing her, covered her mouth, and slit her throat. That's when she said adrenaline kicked in. She said she started screaming for help, which caught Stewart off guard. She said she started fighting back, and when he tried to stab her with the knife again, she grabbed it and it lodged in her hand. She said he kept beating her as she tried to get away. She said she got to the front door and tried to get outside, but he grabbed her and slammed her into the ground. She said she was nearly unconscious, but was able to keep her wits about her. Smith said Stewart locked the door and came back to attack her again. She was able to fight him off and finally get outside. She said she was naked while she knocked on a neighbor's door, trying to get help. One of her neighbors came out and told her he called the police when he heard the screaming. 
While they were outside, the neighbor saw Stewart run across the street. That was right before the police showed up. Stewart was caught and arrested a short time later, but since he had injuries too, he told the authorities that Smith stabbed him first. The story didn't hold up, and he was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. His bond was set at 125000 He's due back in court early next year. Smith said she worries about her safety because Stewart threatened witnesses in previous cases against him. And see, this is what I mean by some people I think are just innately evil, right? Because this wasn't something that he just woke up one morning and decided to do. This was something that had been thought out and had been planned. You see here with this man an escalation. From the first attack, when he unalived someone in the purchase of some shoes, that was the first attack. The second attack was when he was in jail and he was caught with a makeshift shank. If he had not been caught, he would have unalived someone in jail. See, the problem with individuals like this is they're impulsive, they don't think. And once he got away with it the first time, because the, vic the witness refused to testify, I'm sure out of fear for their life because this man is sick and deranged, he was able to go to jail, have a makeshift shank, and get away with it again because all he received was time served. And I think in this situation, I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that she was transgender. I think that might have been on top of it. I think he was on the dating app looking for someone he could do this to. And the first individual that he found that was gullible enough to bite was Taylor. And she got caught up in his sickness. This is what I mean. Some people in this world are just sick. They're just innately evil, deranged, and sick. We cannot keep blaming everything on mental illness. I also think this is a failure of the criminal justice system. Because how did they allow him to get away with this? How do you allow someone who's been accused of and been in jail for unaliving someone over some shoes and the only evidence you seem to have was one witness? You don't have the gun. You don't have text messages. You don't, you don't have anything that puts him at the scene of the crime with the gun in his hand. I mean, what is going on? And this man is able to just walk. How does this happen? Then you get this man in jail and he's in jail and he has a makeshift shank. Someone who's already had a criminal past of unaliving someone. And all you do is give him credit for time served. And now this man is able to get out and attempt to take someone's life. And the only thing that you charge him with is aggravated assault. Please make it make sense. Please. Please help me understand why you can take a knife to someone's house, slit their throat, and it's not attempted murder. Please help me understand. Please. As if this individual's life didn't matter. Do you not realize that it takes a different kind of person to stab someone? because you have to literally feel the blade going through their flesh and be okay with it. It's different when, when there's a shooting because you can almost disconnect because it's happening at a distance. But with a knife, you feel every bit of the penetration because you're the one holding the, the, the weapon and inflicting the damage. Do you know how psychotic and demented you have to be to look into someone's face and slit their throat and how even more sick our criminal justice system has to be to allow someone like this to walk or continue to face another day free on this earth sick and twisted because you decided to give them aggravated assault instead of the charge they should have received which means if in a few years this individual gets out guess what they're gonna do it again and they're gonna do it again because that's the kind of individual this is. He's not gonna stop until he gets some kind of serious help. And I don't know what kind of help you provide to someone who's this evil. I don't know. What I can tell you is be more diligent in protecting yourself. This world is different. It's not like it used to be where we could be on dating apps and meet people and just have fun getting to know someone else. Some of us probably had a one night stand or two off of a dating app. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that day and age anymore. So you got to protect yourself and you have to think responsibly. Think about your life. 
and think about the risk that you're taking when you decide to take one. And inviting someone to your house that you barely know this day and age is a no-no. It is a no-no because you don't know what intentions people have. Protect yourself, protect your space, protect your sanity, and protect your life. And on the flip side, transgenders really have to be careful because there are individuals just like this out there who have an attraction and wanna see what it's like to be with a transgender and then will start feeling guilty when they have an attraction because somehow deep down they don't wanna have one. And they'll do dumbish like this just because they're guilty of an attraction that nobody asked them to have. At this point, everybody needs to protect themselves because this world has changed. I can't even say it's changing. This world has changed. And everyone should be thinking about how do I protect myself? How do I pay more attention? How do I be more aware and more alert so that I don't end up another statistic? So we're getting ready to go, but I'm going to play a clip from the news reporting on this case. But in the famous words from the Midwest, be safe and stay dangerous. And that's Hennessy's own straight talk, no chaser. 75,000. I'm not granting a personal bond. I do have high public safety concerns, especially for the complainant. Galveston County resident Cordell Stewart is behind bars tonight. The judge ordering the 24 year old Sonic drive in cook and father of two to be held on a $125,000 bond. What prosecutors say he did to the woman he met on a dating app is horrifying. The defendant cut the complainant's neck with a serrated knife, causing her to have a four inch severe laceration. In a written statement to KHOU 11 News, Taylor Smith described what she says happened last month. After speaking with Stewart for several days, Smith says she agreed to let him come over for dinner, saying, quote, when I answered the door, a red flag that I didn't think about until after the situation is that he had a bag. Smith writes, I see it was a getaway bag. Smith says Stewart acted like a gentleman. At first, she began to cook dinner. Smith says Stewart joined her in the kitchen. She says they talked, laughed, and kissed. But while engaging in foreplay, she says things took a violent turn. Pinning her arms down with his knees while on top of her, quote, he stopped and covered my mouth and slit my throat, not at different times, but all in a span of three seconds. Smith says she tried to defend herself, grabbing the blade. The knife would end up lodged in her palm. She says she tried to escape as Stewart punched her and body slammed her. Eventually, Smith says she reached the door to scream for help and was heard by neighbors who called 911. She says Stewart ran away, but was caught by police a short time later. He's now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon.